So how can we solve this thing? Here we utilize the notion of dimensional analysis or uh, scaling. We assume the final solution to be of the form u over capital U equals to some uh, function of other variables appears that, that appear in our equation, which will be y t nu, right? But note that u over capital U is a dimensionless number, right? So uh, this function should give us a dimensionless number. According to the Buckingham Pi theorem, uh, this function should not be any random function, but a function of a dimensionless number formed by the three variables. So how can we form a dimensionless variable by the three variables? Y has the uh, dimension of L, length, T here, of course, time, nu L squared over T. So it seems there's only way to form a non-dimensional number with these three, right? Which will be nu over uh, y, nu over y squared to get rid of the, this thing, and times t to get of this. Okay. So for the sake of simplicity, let's not uh, write the non-dimensional number in this way, but as the following way, which will be <coughs> y over two nu t square root. Do you recognize that this and the, and this are essentially the same thing? Okay. So instead of writing any random function of these three variables, we can say this thing should just be a function of the eta, right? Of the non-dimensional number formed by the three variables. So u over capital U should be f eta. u is just equal to capital U times f eta. Now we can plug this into our equation to make it more complicated. Well, I'm just kidding. Uh, although it seems it may become more complicated, you will see the merits afterwards. Here, the small u I'll write as capital U times F eta, right? So capital U is just a constant. I can always uh, pull it out of the derivative. So here, I can get uh, u times df eta dt should be equal to here, nu times u times d squared f eta over dy squared. Okay, so now uh, we'll take the derivative. Remember that f uh, eta, remember eta is a function of t, right? f is directly a function of eta, so if we take the derivative of f according to t, then we need to use the chain rule, right? Same idea here. Eta is a function of y, uh, but f is directly a function of eta, so we need to use the chain rule. Anyway, uh, df d eta over dt is just df d eta times d eta dt, right? df d eta is what? df d eta will call it to be f prime, right? d eta dt is this thing. We see uh, square root t on the denominator, so it's something like t to the power of minus half. So to take this derivative, we need to pull out this, this minus one half. And we, what, we re, what we are remained is first we have an eta, this thing. Uh, the t here should become minus two thirds, uh, uh, right? So we still pull out a minus one half, and then we have a t, okay? So for the minus one half, together we still form this thing, which is eta, and we are left a t in the denominator, right? So it should be something like this. Okay, and what's on the right-hand side? Right-hand side will be nu times uh, d squared f over d eta squared, which will be f double prime afterwards, right? Uh, but here we also have uh, the d eta 
squared over d no d eta over d y squared right this thing nu times f double prime times d eta d y d eta d y is just one over this de denominator so the square should be four nu t over one over four nu t one over four nu t and nu here can are cancelled so what we are left with should be uh, this thing equals to this thing and we can cancel both sides by 1 over t right so what we are end up with is f double prime here uh, over 4 plus this half f prime nu equals to 0 f double prime plus 2 nu f prime equals to 0 this is a uh, second order ordinary differential equation or you can say it's first order because we can treat f prime to be uh, the solution right remember that f is a function of eta so f prime is also a function of eta right so eta here is not a constant how can we solve a thing like this well we can put all the f on the one side and the eta on the other side, right? f prime over f should be equal to minus 2 eta, and we can integrate both sides. So we can get uh, ln f prime equals to minus eta squared plus a constant. So if we take the exponent of both sides, then f prime is just equal to c1, some constant times minus e uh, eta minus eta squared. So if we integrate both sides again, we can get our final result, which is the f, right? f equals to c1, the integral of e this thing, d eta, and plus another constant. OK. Now, uh, in order to get the C1 and the C2, we need to plug in the boundary conditions, right? First, we know that u at 0 t uh, equals to a capital U, right? Capital U. This is for t is bigger than 0. So if we, if we plug in y equals to 0, uh, in this solution, what do we get? y equals to zero. This means eta should be eta should be zero, right? So the integration should be from zero to zero, and it will not have any contribution. Yeah, it will not give us any contribution, right? So now we are only left with uh, c two. And remember, what's the f? The f here is u, uh, u over u, right? Capital U, no, 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 u over u, u over u, uh, lowercase u over capital U. So here, when u equals to capital U, then this thing will give us 1. And we know this integration will give us 0. So c2 must be equal to 1. C2 is equal to 1. This is uh, one condition. Another condition is u at uh, y equals to infinity, right? Here, eta equals to infinity. So the integration should be from 0 to infinity. Well, here I need to tell you a mathematical property. This integral from 0 to infinity of e to the, uh, maybe let's call it minus x squared dx, okay? This thing is the constant value. And I can tell you, of course I will not prove it to you, but I'll tell you that this thing, this definite integral, should give us the uh, result of this. Half uh, square root pi. 
half square root pi. So if we know this, then here, this integration should give us just this value, right? So C1 times this value plus 1 will give us now what? This thing is equal to 0, right? So here, uh, this thing should give us 0. So uh, square root pi over 2 times C1 plus 1 will give us 0. So we can uh, solve for C1, right? C1 will be what? C1 will be something like this. So now we have our solution. U over capital U should be uh, what we call to be F eta here, right? F eta here. So if we plug it in, uh, first we have the 1 here, 1 minus this thing. We pick out the minus sign, and what, what, we, are left the, what we are left with is uh, 2 over square root pi 0 to eta, the, the integration, right? And eta is equal to uh, the variable we defined. This. So we can call this thing, this function, to be an arrow function. An arrow function. And our final result will be u over u equals to 1 minus the arrow function.